All right, so over the next five minutes, I'm going to cover 18 years of the history of browsers. I'm going to talk about how competition and a little bit of politics has shaped the web, and how we ended up with the big five browsers that we have today. So there's this guy, Tim Berners-Lee. He did not invent the internet, but he did invent the World Wide Web. And in the process of that, he created the first browser for it called World Wide Web. That, of course, is very confusing, which is why it was later renamed to Nexus. Now, Nexus was mostly just a browser for geeks. It wasn't until three years later that the first mainstream browser, Mosaic, was launched. Shortly after Mosaic was launched, several of the Mosaic developers left to work for a company called Netscape on their new browser called Navigator. Now, internally, during development, Navigator went by the code name Mozilla, which is a portmanteau of the words Mosaic and Godzilla, the implication being there that they wanted to destroy Mosaic. <laughs> and they were successful. In fact, Netscape was wildly successful, um, in large part because their timing was perfect. They appeared right when the web started to surge in popularity. But that success did not go unnoticed by Microsoft. So Microsoft, starting with an initial team of just six people, started to work on Internet Explorer. Uh, version 1.0 launched in 1995, and um, it was met with a tremendous amount of nobody caring, because <laughs> It would actually take three more versions of IE before they were actually considered competitors to Netscape Navigator. But when that happened, it ignited the browser force. So meanwhile, other stuff is happening. Opera released their first browser in shareware. Some company called Pop is founded. And then two years later, a company called Google would come along. Anyways, back to the browser wars. So we have the incumbent Netscape Navigator, the Goliath. They have 80% market share, a huge head start, and they're constantly trailblazing new technologies like JavaScript forcing IE into this perpetual game of catch-up. In the other corner, though, we have IE backed by Microsoft with seemingly unlimited resources, and they have a secret weapon. They control Windows. So their strategy is to tightly integrate IE4 with Windows and make sure that the competition cannot do the same. This strategy works, and IE wins the browser wars. But people are not happy with how they win the browser wars. And this all comes up during that famous Microsoft antitrust case. Uh, the TLDR of it is Microsoft barely avoids being split into multiple companies, but among other things, they have to promise to stop being jerks to other browsers. <laughs> so this is good news for competition, but it's too late for Netscape. Uh, Netscape never really recovers after the browser wars, but before they fade off into the sunset, they do release their code as open source, which starts Mozilla Project. Now, at this point, Netscape is pretty much dead. Microsoft has no competition with IE, so they just let IE sit <coughs> for five years. <laughs> because they can. <laughs> Fortunately, gears are spinning elsewhere. An experimental offshoot of the Mozilla project called Phoenix starts to gain traction. Phoenix is renamed to Firebird, and then Firebird is eventually renamed to Firefox. So Firefox has a huge amount of pre-launch buzz, and when it finally does launch, uh, the supporters of it actually buy a full-page ad in the New York Times with the not so subtle message in it saying, are you fed up with your browser? We want you to know that there is an alternative. So we reach this point where we have a three year period of competition returning. Uh, Apple releases their new Safari browser, Firefox is very well received, Opera finally releases a truly free, not, not ad supported browser, and all of this finally forces Microsoft to get back into the game and say, okay, fine, we'll make IE7. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, when your browser has 95% market share and has been around for five years, it does not go away easily. Um, and so IE6 has earned its legacy as being the browser that all web developers love to hate. But back to good news. In 2008, a couple of Firefox developers are hired to create a demo of a new browser for Google. This browser becomes Google Chrome, and there you have it. After 18 years, we have finally assembled the big five. So, I mentioned exactly eight browsers during this presentation. There are a couple more I didn't get around to. Um, sorry, I only have 30 seconds left. The point I'm trying to convey is there's a lot more history out there. So where do we stand right now? Well, relatively speaking, things are great. We have really strong, healthy competition between five major browsers. And beyond that, we actually have a lot of cooperation, too, uh, with all of them, for the most part, working towards the same set of web standards. So that brings me to the moral of the story. Browser ports are annoying, <laughs> and yes, cross-browser support takes a lot more time, but it's a good thing because the alternative is far worse, because when you don't have competition, you get a 96. <laughs>